for Jake Oldroyd and BYU takes the 10 7 lead scoring 10 in a row after going down by a score of 7 zip game would be tied at 10 as we're in the second quarter and then a really nice play really Zach Wilson just kind of drops it into Dax Milne here. Yeah great play by Dax and, and a great ball by Zach and the good protection you know so uh, I, I thought they executed really well on this play and uh, against a really active and, and uh, athletic defense and that's we, we heard about the matchups and how hard it would be for our guys and I thought our receivers did an amazing job catching the ball. Vavai Malapai scores to tie the score at 17. And then uh, we don't see a lot of this because yeah, every time human. he kicks it we think it's going in. I know and he's human so that was a mistake but I, I mean I think he, he wants an opportunity to kick that again but you know, we decided to go for it here. This, this was probably I mean I thought the spot for the guy up top was the right yeah, spot. Take that one. He's yeah. the one that can actually see the ball and, and the camera obviously you know couldn't get it because that guy had the best view of it. But anyways uh, it rallied the troops again and they were able to get this play and get this touchdown and get a score ahead of us, but love the way our guys respond back and we're able to get three points on this next drive and and uh, we have a ball game now, you know, we're able to get the ball back and with good field position and um, two great plays here Zach back to back from play. Zach. Yeah, I was able to avoid the rush and um, he was upset that he hung the ball up there for Gunner and got him in, in that position, but uh, you know, Gunner was able to make the play and here he is the QB draw and he can run the ball, so I'm glad we were able to get that score. And you know, would like to end the game there. When the next drive, we had the ball tip around a little bit before uh, they had attempted the field goal on the, on the third down, but uh, it, it worked out. The field goal they would attempt came from 52 yards, and it was good by Chase McGrath. And so tied at 27, we're going back to overtime for the second straight week. First time ever that BYU's played overtime in consecutive weeks, and BYU's first series ends with another Jake Oldroyd field goal. Those would be the final point scored, so that's a game-winning field goal for you because on the ensuing series, this happens, and it's over just that quickly. Yeah, great play. Uh, I think uh, there's Kavika and Chaz on the coverage here, and got a tip, and, and Diane just doing what he does, running to the, to the ball. Uh, it was given a gift there, and then, uh, I'm glad he caught it. <laughs> now, this is only slightly sped up, but it felt like it happened that quickly. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm in the middle of that somewhere, you know, but it, it was a lot of fun. I, I got to hug a bunch of fans, and it was just a great game, and just glad we were able to get the win. Yeah, you said you, 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 said you got up close and personal with a number of fans there on the field after yeah, the game, right? Yeah, it, it was like a dream come true for me. So, yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> there was a moment where they were all rushing in, and we're jumping up and down, and my feet were, I, you know, I, I thought I was having this like really cool experience. But the truth is, they just squeezed me so tight that I wasn't able to come back to the ground. <laughs> so there's about, there about 30 seconds there where I was just like really floating on the air. And it, was, it was a cool. I haven't felt that way since my baptism, so that was nice. <laughs> That was cool. <laughs> some, some inadvertent crowd surfing. I was talking to Coach Tuiaki yesterday. He said he didn't even know his mom was at the game until after the game. He's being hugged by her on the field. Like, what are you doing here, Mom? Yeah, <laughs> it, it, you just have these instincts of, like, I hope my daughters and my son are okay and my family because uh, it, was, it was crazy. They were, they were having fun. But uh, there were, I saw a lot of young people and parents and, and, and grandparents, and they were just having, like, a good time. And I, I'm glad that they got to, you know, be that close to our players and, and enjoy that moment. You've beaten a ranked team before uh, with BYU, but that was the first home win over a ranked team. And uh, I'm, I'm glad everyone got to enjoy it uh, there with you on Saturday. Yeah, a lot of fun. And, and uh, we have another ranked team coming into town this Saturday. So, and same time, so it's going to be exciting. It'll be a little bit cooler, so it won't be as hot. And you know, I know a lot of people forgot their sunscreen and everything. <laughs> so hopefully we can remember the sunscreen this time and be ready to still scream. And voices should recover by then. And, the, the energy that, you, that the fans give our players, is, it was amazing that day and looking forward to it happening again. Your coordinators, the three coordinators, pick some players of the game and let's review them for a quick second. Uh, we're going to look at offense and special teams first up. And offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes going with Tyson Williams. Came one rushing yard shy of his first century mark at BYU. That will come in time. And then on special teams, uh, Max Tooley got the nod from Ed Lamb. Yeah, and, I mean, both guys have done a great job. I think... You know, we all know about Tyson, the things that he can do with the ball in his hands. It, it, I was really impressed with his pass protection and the physical part that he was able to provide more time for Zach in, in pass pro. Um, Max is a guy that's still coming along. He's young and had a lot of significant reps this, this game. Looking forward to seeing all the plays that he can make on defense and special teams. He, he's a high energy guy and has a huge ceiling when it comes to potential, what he can do on the defensive side of the ball. But 
Um, really pleased. We had a lot of guys that played well. and. That's why Elijah uh, Tuiaki picked yeah. four defensive players of the game here. Yeah, and, and you know uh, what Lorenzo and Kyrus did up front was amazing. They 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 uh, took on two three blocks and then were able to beat them. Uh, um, you know, for the most part, uh, I think uh, you guys saw what Peyton did. He was active making tackles. Diane was really upset because earlier in the game he had a chance to get a pick, and um, he just kept saying, "I'm going to get one. I'm going to get one," and I'm glad he was right. So uh, if we, now we just need him to get two for the next <laughs> game, but. Uh, just I thought the coaches did an amazing job preparing the, the players and players executed really well and the energy and the belief that they have in each other. It's amazing. So uh, like I said before, I'm head coach to get the best view in the house and, and I'm glad I was able to have a fan moment and cheer them on. We saw Kyrus Tonga there in the graphic and we'll visit with uh, Kyrus later on in the show. So uh, back to back wins for you guys and it's also not coincidentally Kalani back to back wins with zero giveaways. No, no turnovers by the O. Yeah, I think we have a good chance at, at having success if we're able to take care of the football. But then on the other side of things, having a defense create some havoc and and be able to get some turnovers. And, and uh, I thought, uh, you know, it was a great de defensive game plan. Um, not trying to give away our game plans ahead of time, but I have a lot of faith in our coaches and our players have a lot of faith in each other and executing, practicing. And what I saw in practice today, I'm really looking forward to this game against Washington as a, you know, the response to what we've already done in the, in the season so far. On the USC game plan that worked, what did you think really would have to work for you defensively to have a shot and, and win that game? I thought tackling would, would really have to improve. I mean, we, that's a, a really athletic team and I thought our guys were pretty sound. It was never perfect, but we talked about it as a team that the, the effort uh, will make up for missed tackles and mistakes. And uh, our guys' effort and energy was, was amazing. and, and uh, uh, I thought they were able to put it together. We used a lot of bodies. Um, some of it was planned. The others were, you know, we had to ta kind of tap into our, 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 uh, our depth a little bit more. And, and uh, the guys that, that performed uh, did a great job in coming off the bench and uh, saw more reps, one being like Max Tooley and others that, you know, that, that were able to fill in for, for um, Chaz IU and others to fill in for the guys that couldn't go. Um, I, I know that on defensive safeties, Malik Moore played some significant refs. Austin Lee was solid there, but uh, we saw some new bodies. Bo Tanner did some really good things too. So we used a lot of bodies and, and some of it was planned. The others weren't, but I'm just glad the guys were focused and ready to go when, it was, when their numbers called. A lot of bodies up front, even though you were using only three men a lot of the day. Yeah, yeah. We want to keep our guys fresh and I know uh, our D linemen want to play more and want to get on the field more, but I think the key was to keep them as fresh as possible so that we can get a lot of energy on the, on the pass rush and be able to get into the throwing lanes, you know, and um, that's that's hard to do when you're when you're you're looking at our coverage and, and being able to just make sure that the quarterback holds on the ball a little bit longer and his timing was a little bit off and you know we, we I think that's the third down before the uh, the field goal attempt, but um, I thought our guys did a great job and they played hard and, and had a lot of fun and. And I'm glad that uh, at the end of it, we all got to celebrate with the fans and do some dancing again. Yeah. yeah. Now, we didn't see as much dancing from you this week. And you, you're saying you want to you want to see a little less of you dancing. Is that? Yeah, well, my daughters and my son, they, I think they want to see less of me dancing. But <laughs> I'm going to dance as much as the fans want me to and, and, the, and the players want me to. But I thought, you know, it was kind of it seemed a little bit too um, self-centered to have everyone just watch one or two guys dance. So we did a whole team electric slide type dance. Yeah. So, yeah. There's a lot of group dances that you can do that involve everyone. And um, I hope you get to find out what they all are this oh yeah, year. We've already thought, yeah, I've already looked it up. There's a bunch that we can, <laughs> we can get into. So there's enough to cover the whole, the whole season. Good. So Keep the wins and the dances coming. All <laughs> right, uh, break time. And this reminder that uh, for your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play, -play, watch BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and here on BYU Radio. When we come back, we go inside the film room with special teams coordinator Ed Lamb and we'll show you what the throwback uniforms look like that BYU will wear against Washington this weekend. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com.
2019 BYU Spectacular featuring American singer and songwriter Ben Rector along with Hillary Weeks joins a talented BYU lineup October 17th and 18th in the BYU Marriott Center. Get your tickets at BYUtickets.com. Are you ready to do whatever I tell you to do? Do I have a choice? Not really. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. We are back on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Saturday, we are live with BYU versus Washington. Pre-game coverage on BYU Radio at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific time with Cougar Pre-game Live. And an hour later, BYU TV's countdown to kickoff is on the air, followed by game coverage on ABC or ESPN2, depending on where you live, as well as BYU Radio for play-by-play, -play, of course, and then post-game coverage on both BYU TV and BYU Radio. Well, each week we give you access to an assistant coach who highlights a few great plays from the previous game with our own Jerem Jordan, who this week sits alongside special teams coordinator Ed Lamb as we go inside the film room. All right, here with Ed Lamb in the film room. And Ed, uh, what a Saturday, what a win, what a uh, celebration. How was it for you? It was fantastic. Those of us in the, in the box, the coach's box, really were enjoying it together. And we got down there as soon as we could and, and enjoyed the celebration. And, about uh, a half hour after the game, start looking to the next opponent. That quickly, huh? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Absolutely. Well, let's break. I know it's not Washington. This is USC, but let's discuss uh, being aggressive in the red zone with that scrum play with Gunwoloku again, trying to get that fourth and one. We practice this play against 15 to 20 guys on defense every day in practice. So wow. this is not a play where we actually tell the defense where it's going. So normally in practice, we'll have about uh, 11 guys right here at the point of attack and we still say we can get a yard. So the team has great confidence in what we do. Um, the philosophy of this play is to just get a lot of bodies in a tight area and then push harder than, than they push. And uh, yeah, we do let them know it's coming. This one had, uh, you know, that's an arm tackle right there. We got a lead blocker, we got a blocker here. With what, the quarterback, Austin Kofensis. With the quarterback. We had probably the first breakdown on the play. Our tight end um, had a good cross face position right there and should have kept that. He kept, comes off the backside a little bit, and then the, and then the play gets initially arm tackled about the line of scrimmage, and then Dyan fights forward for what could have been enough yardage, but it ended up you know not being enough yardage for a first down. You're the linebackers coach, and boy did your guys come to play in possessions two and three, especially creating two of those three turnovers. Coach Sitaka actually early in the week, it really you know he's a linebacker coach by training in his past life, and. He, w he really wanted the linebackers to do a great job of keeping their eyes on the quarterback this week. Felt like that that would be a key to the, to the game. And they really responded to the occasion. You can see uh, we've got a drop eight zone uh, right here. So that's gonna be a three man rush. And first thing that always makes these work is when that three man rush makes the quarterback feel some presence. You can see we're busting through up the middle right there. That's, that's nice Amahib. And now in, in any zone, no matter how many guys you have in the zone, there's still enough field space where a defender's gonna be uh, he's going to be conflicted. And in this case, the, the defender belongs underneath the one receiver and be behind or underneath the third receiver coming across right here. And so that's Isaiah Kalfusi, but he keeps his eyes on the quarterback, is able to read the quarterback, and then quickly make that decision there to go to the inside part of his uh, responsibility and is able to make a nice catch right there and take it into their territory. And the game-winning play 
is Don Gonwoloku, and this is a combination from Kavik Fonu and Ch Chaz Ayu, who deflect and get that ball up for uh, Gonwoloku. Yeah, it's it's the same idea. Eyes on the quarterback, so a great job right here. This is the same defense that uh, Peyton, um, and so you see Peyton, he'll slide out again, and and then uh, Chaz is able to play pretty tight man coverage on the intended receiver. But again, talk about a conflict here. If you watch Kavika Fanua, who's there on the hash, as this play develops, Kavika's got the conflict this time. There's two receivers, and we have man coverage on them, but it's still a very short throw, and so they're they're both open, so to speak, but Kavika does a great job of locking in on the quarterback, and he's able to make the first, I think, deflection right there. I think Chaz's contact second is what pops it up, and then Diane missed. Basically, we had the exact same play earlier in the game um, on their goal line, but uh, gets it done there, game over. Okay, this week, another big matchup. Uh, this time, Washington comes in. I guess a couple of thoughts on uh, the Huskies. Oh, really solid team that embarrassed us last year and uh, embarrassed us defensively. And so we respect every opponent. We res really respect Washington and their ability. They've got another great quarterback this year, a great group of receivers, running backs, very capable, and a massive offensive line. It'll be a real challenge for us uh, defensively to, uh, to keep us in the ballgame. Okay, thanks for the time, Ed. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Good to see you. All right, good stuff, guys. Thanks very much. It was announced earlier today in celebration of the 150th anniversary of college football, BYU will wear throwback uniforms against Washington. They'll feature a, a white top, royal pants, and the white helmet with the old school block Y. That uh, helmet design will also be showing up at, uh, at midfield, on the field itself, along with a retro diamond scheme painted in the end zone. It's going to be a pretty cool look at Lavelle Edwards Stadium on Saturday for BYU and the University of Washington, we see there the old school, really old school helmet and the modern day replication. And that's what the field will look like on Saturday with those diamond touches in the end zone and the helmet there at the 50 uh, yard line. What do you think, Kalani? Yes, nice. I mean, that, I just want to play the game, you know. <laughs> I think, I think it's, it's nice that we get the uniforms and everything, but it, it doesn't matter to me what they wear. I, I think it's going to be a cool tribute. If you couldn't figure out which one was the older helmet, then probably should be around football a little bit more. But no, I, I thought it was cool. I, I, rem I rem remember playing in that 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 uniform in, in the royal bottoms and the and the white top, and so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And the fans can wear white. It's gonna be a lot cooler, you know. So it'll, it'll be won't won't be so hot as it was the navy. What is last the forecast week. for Saturday? I don't know. I was looking up. It's gonna be lower 70s right now. So. It almost feels uh, like fall then, if that's the case. Yeah, it was yeah. a little cooler today, so I mean, that, it could all change. I don't know. The weather seems to be different, and I don't have the weather control that Lavelle used to have. Yeah, I kind of had it on lockdown, yeah. But I'm working on it. <laughs> BYU this week uh, playing for its third straight win over a third straight P5 program. University of Washington coming in. Uh, first time in nine years that uh, the Huskies will play here in uh, Provo. And they've got uh, transfer quarterback out of Georgia. This tight end you're seeing here had a huge week last week for UW. Now they've played three games. They've all been at home. So like USC, Kalani played its first game on the road at your place. Uh, they're leaving Seattle for the first time this year to play on the road. Yeah, and you know, coming from sea level to elevation, and so it's good to have them here. We uh, historically have played, played them pretty well at home here in Lavelle Stadium. So uh, looking forward to them being here and have a lot of respect for that program and, and their coach and things that they've done. I, I know a lot of coaches on that staff, and so they're really good men. And uh, just looking forward to the matchup. I think our guys are excited for the for the game, and then uh, you know we, we're we're excited that we have them at home, just like we did last week. They really got after Hawaii this past uh, this past weekend in Seattle, didn't they? They did, and, and Hawaii had some. I mean, you know, I thought I was impressed with their defense, what they did to Hawaii's uh, uh, you know air raid type of offense, being able to throw the ball. So, uh, like like Ed said earlier, that it's going to be a, a, a big task for us, and we're going to have to be really assignment sound and. Really going to this week, we're not as, as much as we know and respect our opponents. This focus has got to be on us um, playing at our best and making sure that that we're executing at a high level and playing the, the style of football that BYU should be more than than who the opponent is. You know, so uh, I think we're getting better every week. We'll see how much better we got from week three to week four, and just really looking forward to the matchup and excited that the fans get to see this. You know, a Power Five, Pac-12 team coming to. to coming to Provo. So it's a fourth straight P5 opponent for you to open the season. There's some challenges that come with that, obviously, physical and otherwise, but it's also is there, there's many opportunities as there are challenges. You win these games and like, for example, BYU's, you know, picking up top 25 votes this past week. 
Yeah, and just uh, really just excited about the opportunities that you mentioned before that that we have uh, these uh, the schedule. You know, we're excited that, that we have them at home, and I'm excited that we have them at 1:30. You know, so uh, uh, the fans and, and and the players and the energy is going to be electric, and just looking forward to putting putting forth a good game. And I know our players are, are demanding a lot from each other, and we're gonna have a lot of fun with it, and not really focus on the end result as much as the journey and and uh, and the process. And then I, I think if we do that this week. It, uh, we have a really good chance. Just so viewers and listeners have an idea of a few players that BYU will need to be taken care of and watch on, on Saturday for Washington. It's a good offensive group. I mentioned the quarterback there from Georgia, Eason. Uh, Savan Ahmed is a running back you guys saw last year. Uh, Fuller, tremendous receiver, really nice group of receivers for, for, for UW. Compared to the offense you just saw last week, let's say, USC, where does Washington maybe compare to those guys? Very comparable. I think, I think they have tons of talent and a lot of different weapons just like SC did, um, but a little bit different of a uh, scheme, they're, they're probably a little bit more balanced compared to what um, USC was, uh, um, other than the game that we played against them. I think USC wants to air it out a little bit more and focus on the air raid, and I think uh, Washington is going to be a little bit more balanced, you know, and, and try to do both run and throw and, and um, take some shots and things like that. So defensively, I think we're going to have to be on top of everything. and. Uh, on, on their defense, they're, they're really active defense, and then they keep a lot of the stuff in front of them. They they play their deep, their safeties quite deep, you know, and so not a lot of big play opportunities there, other than being assignments out and missing tack, uh, creating missed tackles and things like that. And we sit, we saw from last week what Micah can do with a five-yard hitch throw and turn it into a big gain. And I think we have a lot of um, weapons ourselves, and it's going to be a really cool matchup. Looking forward to the game. The Huskies have uh, one guy with a family name that's familiar to, to BYU fans. Mm -hmm. They've got a kid named Puka Nakua, uh, and he caught a touchdown pass for them last week. He did, yeah, and, and uh, it was cool to see him on film. And we know him and uh, know his brother, Kai, you know, so we have Looks that connection. Like Kai, he? he does, you know, <laughs> and just playing playing at receiver instead of Kai was a safety. But I think uh, he's a great kid, you know, we're just looking forward to him not having a great game on Saturday <laughs> and and then having the great season the rest of the way you know, that's, uh, I love him and his family <laughs> just it's gonna be fun yeah so I, I think our guys are gonna be excited to, uh, for the matchup all right that's our look ahead to the Huskies as you head to break we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet dinner Monday through Wednesday a kitchen and large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail all at the residence in Marriott in Provo Hey, Mondays at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific, we talk with the BYU football coordinators on Coordinator's Corner with Jeff Grimes, Elias Tuiaki, and Ed Lamb. That's Mondays, 1 Eastern from Studio C right here at BYU TV. After the break, Kalani takes your questions in studio and from social media. This is BYU football with Kalani Sitake. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork excited for the reboot. The teaser looks really good. Uh, so Sammy, are these yours? Mom, what are you doing here? Can a mom just drop in on her special snowflake? No, really, what are you doing here? I'm moving in with your sister to make sure you two eat healthy. We know how to feed ourselves. Mm, just like you know how to decorate. <laughs> Don't worry, I took care of that too. The girls are gonna love it. BYU Meal Plans. Home cooking without mom. Jenny and I had been married a number of years, and I was drawn to a picture of my mother and father. It was their wedding day picture, and I noticed that my mother was pregnant. So a couple months later, it's Christmas, Christmas Day, I'm with my grandmother, and I said, I didn't know that my mom was pregnant on her wedding day. And she said, well, oh, honey, but Roger raised you as though you were his own. 
just absolute shock and disbelief. My father wasn't my father. Welcome back to BYU football with Kalani Sitake. This week, Kalani's Cougs prepping to face the Washington Huskies. Both teams off the 2-1 and one starts to the season in the lead-up to the 2019 campaign. We heard from the Cougs about uh, facing a team that uh, got after BYU last season in Seattle. Well, that's the one. If anybody asks me, like, which is the game you're most excited for, you're supposed to say Utah, but I want Washington. We got a lot more to prove this year than we did last year, I feel like. We have a lot of talent. And we have something, we have a chip on our shoulder this year. I feel like it'll be a, a whole new game in the fact that we'll, we won't be hurting ourselves. We'll be, we're a lot more smooth as an offense. We're more fast, fast paced. And so I don't know if they'll be ready for that, that change. It'll be different because it's new, new team. We're a new team and a lot can change in one year. Oh, it's always good to be at home. Have, have our fans, have our support. You know, the, the, the crowd plays a huge part in football. A lot of people forget about that, but they really do. Yeah, I just think we're a different team now. I think. The team has a different mentality. The coaches have a different mentality. You know, Washington's an incredibly talented team, and I know that we're going to have to put all of our tools together in order to really perform and play well against those guys. I just think we're a more a more mature ball club. You know, that was a hostile environment that we went into, and that's part of you know when you're building a program and, and trying to get to where you want to get to, you have to play games like that. This year, everybody's kind of playing with the chip on their shoulder. Everybody kind of has that thing. We don't want what happened last year to happen again. All right, time now for some Kalani Q&A. We go to social media and our studio audience and let Cougar Nation call the shots for a segment. And we'll start this week's Q&A right here in the studio with Paula Bates at the mic. Hello, Paula. Hi, Coach. With the throwback emphasis for this weekend's game, will you and the other coaches be wearing tweed jackets and ties? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to go the other way. I'm trying to wear shorts and, and a T-shirt, you know. But no, I... I I'm not, but I probably, I'll be wearing, uh, it's, it's nice that I dress up for the cougar walk, but I, other than that, I can't wait to get it off and put like a polo on and my coaching gear on. But yeah, probably not. I mean, but Coach Grimes would look really good in the throwback uniform or your throwback <laughs> coaching stuff, but the rest of us wouldn't look good in it. But good question, Paula. <laughs> No, no fedora for Coach Sataki no. this weekend. All right. Uh, from social media, at G Hansen 25, uh, he is really concerned about you. Uh, how is your ankle after postgame celebrations the last two weeks? My ankle feels so great right now. <laughs> it does not even hurt. So Fully recovered? Yeah. Not uh, fully, but I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. It's a winning ankle. So <laughs> uh, as soon as it heals completely, I've got to sprain it so we can get good luck on it. So you're uh, probable for Saturday? No, I'm going to dance. I'm going to do whatever I can. I want to jump around and get excited, yeah. Uh, studio, question number two from Ross Nuttall. Hello, Ross. What's up, Coach? Good win. How you doing, Ross? Um, uh, if you could go back to your college football days and play any one other s position than what you played in college, what would you play? <sighs> quarterback. It's BYU. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be any good, but, yeah, I'd, I'd love to play quarterback. That would be, be fun. Yeah, that, I mean, those are all my, my heroes growing up watching, you know, Steve Young and Ty Detmer and Jim McMahon, those guys. And so that's the position when you think about BYU. Uh, what's your favorite playing memory from uh, your days here at BYU? Lavelle. Just, yeah, everything, everything with Lavelle is my favorite. And the fans, those are the two things that always stick out. I, I mean, I, I never thought that when growing up that uh, as a kid that I'd be able to play football for BYU. I tried to do it. And, it was a dream come true. I remember every uh, every time I stepped onto the field, how how honored I felt to be a football player at BYU, and um, you know, and I look at the fans and see their faces, and it just makes me uh, it's, it's crazy. You have a fan that's that played at BYU and now is a head coach, and so uh, there's a lot of hope for for young people out there. You can be the next head coach after this one coaches for a while. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> give you some time. Yeah. Uh, at Heresy 64, social media says, uh, Coach, many college football teams give players small helmet decals to recognize a noteworthy play or achievement. BYU used to do this, but at some point the practice stopped. Why did it stop and why isn't it done today? Helmet stickers. Yeah, I remember that. They used to have like little cougar stickers yeah. and um, whenever you did something good, I, I, don't, I don't know, I felt like, I feel like personally that it just makes people stand out and football's a team game. And so uh, we're all gonna look the same and 
you could probably tell the guys that got dirty the most that they probably played. But I, I try to keep, that's why I don't really make announcements on scholarships. When we scholarship our walk-on guys, I think they're all special to me. And I want them to know that everyone has a role in this team. And um, some guys get to, you know, touch the ball every play, the center and James Empey and Zach Wilson. But others have just as important role in, in making this thing successful. Okay, uh, back in studio with Holly. Hello, Holly. Hi, hey coach, we Good love morning. you and the Cougars. Um, quick question, so how much involvement do you have in offense and defense play calls when things are going good or bad? Oh man, I, well, I, I try to do, the play calls that happen, it, it usually happens during the week and as you prepare your game plan and you do things like, I don't, I don't want the coordinators ever f to feel like they have to look over their shoulder and worry about uh, me just throwing in my two cents, you know? And, so I, I trust them, all the coordinators, to make the plays but, and make calls. If, I wanted, if there's something that I want to see, I'll probably mention it and not in that time where they're trying to make a call. So you won't see me on the headphones telling Coach Tuyaki or Grimes what to call at that moment because it's not fair to them. I've been in that position before where they're at. And so, uh, but during the week, we communicate quite a bit. And then during the time off when offense or defense or special teams off the field, I'll talk to them about what I see. And, but I have a lot of trust in my coaching staff. That's why I don't, the running backs coach and the linebackers coach, the D-line coach, and they can all, they can all handle their, their part. Holly White, thank you. All right, from uh, social media again, a uh, friend of the program, at Jason DC Ford one says, of the three, coaching staff, physicality of players, or Pac-12 talent, what's the biggest threat the Huskies bring to the game this Saturday? Hashtag go Cougs. Oh, out of the three? Yeah. Oh, this is a combination of all of it. So, I mean, Coaching staff has tons of experience. I've been, I've seen what they've done in, in college football. They, they seem to replace and, and um, replace players. They, they graduate them and, and they replace them and doesn't seem to miss a beat very often. And so that's a huge compliment to the coaches and the, the system that they have in place there at, at Washington. And uh, I admire the, their coaches a lot. And, and, and so it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think you heard all our players mention how much they want to see from last year to now, how much we've learned. And so mm -hmm. uh, I want to see how much we've improved from week three to week four. And a lot of our players want to see how much we've improved from 2018 to 2019. And we get to show it on, on Saturday at 1.30. Last Saturday it was 1.30. This Saturday it's 1.30. The Toledo game time got set. It's noon Eastern. It'll be 10 o'clock in the morning here. But that's three straight uh, daytime sunshine kickoffs for you. Well, I like it. We're getting, our, getting some tan lines. It's going to be fun. <laughs> By the way, you've got a really good win-loss record in the daytime games, by the way. I want to tell you that right now. All right, let's keep, keep playing in the daytime. <laughs> okay. Let's just remember that when the snow starts falling, the daytime <laughs> games are nice. <laughs> All right, heading to break. And the BYU women's soccer team, by the way, is ranked in the top 10 nationally. And they'll be visiting top 15 Kansas this Thursday. Number 10 against number five, number seven against number 14, BYU and KU. Hear the broadcast. I'll be out there uh, for uh, a 7.30 Eastern time broadcast start, 4.30 p.m. Pacific from Lawrence, BYU and Kansas. Coming up next, we get mic'd up with Diane Gumwolaku, and we chat with Kairos Tonga. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. <laughs> This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really? They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Martin's Collision Repair. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martin's Collision. 
vision repair. Are you ready for an adventure? I think. <laughs> Are you ready to step out of your comfort zone? Childbirth was more fun. Are you ready to do whatever I tell you to do? Do I have a choice? Not really. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare. Healing for life. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV presented by Intermountain Healthcare. It is time to check in on our Cougars in the NFL. Jamal Williams, touchdown catch, which means a Lambeau leap for the Packers this past weekend. Taysom Hill, still doing Taysom Hill type things. I know some folks in New Orleans would like to see him be the replacement for Drew Brees. Drew's out for a while. They're going to go with Teddy for the time being. We'll see how that goes. Fred Warner there with the uh, 49ers. Seven tackles in a TFL over the weekend. And Sione Takitaki made his NFL debut for the Browns on Monday Night Football. Well, each week we go under the helmet to get all access, look, and listen to what goes on during a BYU practice. And tonight's featured player is Diane Gonwoleku. So this is Mike Dub. It's just me and you. What's up? Long time no see. <laughs> hey, hey, stay up! What you falling over? Lamb talk. Coach Lamb talk. Yo, Coach Lamb talk. impactful players on this BYU defense getting it done from his nose tackle position. Please welcome in this week's special guest. He is Kairos Tonga. <laughs> Have a seat. You look good. Fresh out the shower. <laughs> huh? The hair will curl up. It's just wet. That's why it's not at the collar right now. <laughs> How would you describe what you got going on with the hair these days? I think it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> when did you decide to bring a little uh, blonde into the life as a brunette there? Just spilt bleach yeah. on his hair. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just, it just happened. And it just happened. It stays. <laughs> yeah. Kalani, you said he looks good. Uh, what, what's, what's maybe your maybe ideal playing weight? What's he, what, what do you guys want to see him playing at, and how do you feel these days? Well, I just want him on the field a lot more, and, and, and uh, you know, he, he was uh, really mindful of his diet and nutrition and, and uh, worked really hard to, to lose some weight, but he, you know, he, he also added a lot of bulk, and got, he's just really strong in the weight room, and you can see on the field that it carries over, but I uh, just wanted him to be as as, fit, as efficient as possible, and we need him on the field as much as possible. And that's why he he was able to make those changes, and uh, just love the way he worked this off season. It's paid off. What do you want to be playing at these days, or what are you these days? Uh, I'm at like like 325, 3, 323, mm. but uh, wherever wherever <laughs> the coaches need me, I'll, I'll be. So, so if, <laughs> <laughs> when he talks about your diet, what's what's a typical day for you? I mean, are you are you like a just a simple morning, noon, night guy? Are you eating throughout the day, and how does it work that way for you? Uh, during the summer and fall, like throughout fall camp, I was a uh, I'm trying to eat like five times a day, mm. just like constantly eating and uh, working out. But it's kind of hard to do that during school, so uh, I just try to eat uh, like in the morning when I wake up, 
and then before practice, and then after practice, just like three times. So. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about the position you've been asked to play uh, for this team? Not the position of nose tackle, but what they want you to do, and what do you want to see yourself improve on as the co as season goes along? Yeah, I feel good about the position that they want me in. Um, I'm, I'm down for whatever <laughs> uh, the coaches ask me to do. I'll do if it's playing end or playing nose. Uh, drop me at linebacker. I, <laughs> I try my best. I, I don't. I don't think I. I don't know if I'll do good, but I'll, I'll do my best in whatever situation I need to do. What kind of linebacker do you make, Kalani? He'd be fine at linebacker. He's <laughs> he, he 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 played fullback though too. So you know we we asked him to do a lot of things and. Um, you know, against uh, earlier in the year, we had him play some D end. Uh, I think that um, he showed that he's really good at up front and playing at nose, and that's where he he feels comfortable. But I just like him being on the field. He's done an amazing job. He's a great teammate, and uh, just love having this guy around. You know, when I first offered him, he was uh, 120 pounds lighter, right? And he thought he'd be a, a tight end or a linebacker in college, and. I reminded him that he's going to be eating a lot and lifting a lot of weights. And <laughs> I'm glad he trusts me <laughs> to choose. But he's he's an amazing young man, and I just I, I love getting to know him. And I've known him for a long time now. But I just he comes from a wonderful family and plays with a lot of heart. And his teammates just absolutely love him. Okay, Kyrus, USC game. Uh, you you were a big time player in that one and uh, made life difficult for their for their freshman quarterback. Coach Tuiaki talks a lot about how he challenges the D-line. If it's just going to be three men, go make it happen with three somehow. Do you, know, do, you, do you take that challenge upon you pretty seriously? Yeah, I think as a, as a whole D-line we do. Uh, we have something called relishing our role, uh, just being able to, to do whatever it, it takes as a D-line to, uh, to make some plays. If it's uh, giving time for the corners or um, getting in front of the, the QB, we'll do it, getting our hands up, just little things like that. We'll, we'll take it and... Uh, uh, we're happy with that. What's the most important thing in your position? Is it more just size? Is it technique? Great combination thereof? Yeah, I think it, it goes with size and technique. Uh, I think just uh, I'm still working on that, just being able to, to use good technique. That's something that Coach Elisa is uh, constantly helping us with as a, as a D-line. Um, that's just usually what it is, just uh, the size and technique, yeah. Coach Tuiaki, as, uh, as someone who's done some ultimate fighting in his past, uh, talks about the value of, of, of being crafty with your hands. Does he yeah. share that with you guys a lot? Yeah, he, uh, he lets us know that this, these are our tools and that we should never lose our tools. So every time our hands go away, we're losing our tools. It means we're losing our body position, we're losing our power. So as long as we have our hands in front of us and using our hands and using your right, we're able to, uh, to complete what we need to do. So. Everyone talks about the O-line having great chemistry. What about D-line? I, I think we're pretty close. We're, we're, yeah, I think we're super close, actually, as a, as a D-line. We're always laughing. We're always uh, making sure we're, we're always competing against each other and making each other better. Uh, but as a whole, I, I feel like the, the defensive line is pretty close. Let's talk a bit about your life. You, uh, you ended up serving a mission in Wichita, Kansas. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, what, what, what got you, a, uh, A, on a mission, and then what ultimately got you to BYU as well? Um, on a mission... What got me is my my family. Um, they they helped me throughout everything. Just helped me understand the church more. Uh, being able to to see them and I was having a, so I was I was adopted and so before I was adopted I was I was living with my family before everything became um, before everything became uh, legal um, and uh, and I remember watching my my best friend in high school is now my brother. Um, go on a mission, and I looked up to him. And when he came back, uh, I just I just knew I needed to go on a mission. It was something that uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how the mission was going to play out in my life, but it just felt right to do. And um, that eventually led me to to here at BYU. Everything was going good. I mean, uh, I was supposed to, with Utah. I remember just sending like a bunch of pictures, mission pictures, done up the U and doing all that stuff, and then. I remember, like, uh, towards the end of my mission, my dad was like, hey, you hear about Coach Kalani? I was like, what about him? He's like, yeah, he's at BYU. I was like, oh, uh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. I, I ended up coming to BYU, and uh, no regrets, no look backs, and uh, it's been the, probably one of the best decisions of my life. So, Kalani, when do you uh, recall first, first? Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> When did you first become acquainted with this guy? 
he's 15 years old, you know, and uh, he's been through a lot. So just proud of him. You know, he's, he's uh, such a humble young man and uh, always thinking of others, you know, and so just uh, he's been through so much and I'm glad that his family was there for him. And he plays with his family in mind when he takes the field and the way he treats people, it's, it's, it's a awesome thing for me to see him do service and charity and help young people out. And he's always thinking of others. I'm glad he went on a mission. You know, he, he, uh, He's, he's made for, to serve others. And I know on the football field you see this nasty, mean guy, but uh, he, he, is, he is a great, humble young man. And I think Heavenly Father is really proud of the things that he's done in his life up to now. And I know he'll do great things in the future. Hmm. You're playing for your teammates. You're playing for your coach. You're playing for your school. Who else do you play for when you hit the field on Saturdays? I play for my family, uh, just like with Coach Kalani. Um, something before my very first game, uh, Portland State, uh, I remember Coach Kalani, uh, before we even, before we even took the field, he just said, remember who you play for. Um, it's your family, you play for those you love, those are the fans, and you play for each other. And that's just something that's been in my mind, instilled in my mind since then, uh, that it's not just, it's not, hey, I'm just playing for, just to play the game. Uh, there's, there's people who are literally rooting for us, praying for us, other families who are watching, making sure we're okay. And then um, then the guys who we practice with every single day um, that put in the hard work. And that's something that's been um, with me since our freshman year, so. You're a junior right now. How far do you see yourself taking uh, football in your life? I ho I hopefully I can take it far. Um, that's just something that, uh, I mean, we all play the game for, is uh, one day playing in the NFL and, and continuing the NFL. But if not, I just, my degree to graduate, making sure that I'm, I'm healthy, and um, one day I have a future family. So, <laughs> what, are you major, what are you majoring in? Uh, communications. Okay, right so. on. Good. Uh, we get to see a little bit sometimes snippets of locker room celebrations and whatnot, and Kalani's dancing is famous already. Uh, how much fun are days like Saturday or even Tennessee, where you guys are in there and it's all coming loose at that point? It's fun. It's uh, <laughs> we say it, we say it all the time for hey. Like before the game, like after the game, like hey, we'll do all the dancing after the game. Just make sure we uh, we execute and uh, have fun out there. So we're having fun in the field, but when we get in that locker room, it's it's all different. Everyone's different. Everyone, <laughs> all screaming, high voices, guys dancing everywhere. So it's uh, it's fun. So do you have a few moves of your own that you've broken out? No, I don't. He doesn't. He doesn't no, perform on the, the cameras <laughs> around. This guy, he's being shy. There's there's women that want to see you out there dancing, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing for you, uh, Washington this weekend, and then a whole lot more to come after that. But how pumped up are you for what the team's done through three games, and what you hopefully uh, what you hope is in store? We're excited. Uh, I'm excited. Um, Washington is a great team. We played great teams so far, and um, just having a chip on our shoulders, just going into it. Um, today, our coach, um, our coach Lamb, he just said, just walk in like the 0 and 1 mentality going into Tennessee, mm -hmm. and that's our mindset every game. 0-1, we're going in and uh, making sure that we can execute and play and just most importantly have fun. Well, it's been fun watching you play and have you on the show again. Really appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, that's you. Kyra's <laughs> Fans, if you are looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, try Smith's Click List where you order online then pick up curbside by the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. Fans, you can break down Cougar football with Dave McCann. Brian Logan, Blaine Fowler, and David Nixon each week on After Further Review. It aired earlier tonight. It's on demand on the BYU TV app. You can watch it tomorrow morning on BYU TV at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific time. As we go to break, here's this week's trivia question. BYU's career leader in field goals made is a native of the state of Washington. Who is he? We'll tell you after our final break. Call it a path. Or a way through. It can be arrow straight or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey, and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward.
Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From accidents to wills, from bankruptcy to business law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. This is my wife, Deshae Pardon. And this is my husband, Chris Pardon. When she got pregnant, we found out it was a boy, and the first thing she did was cry. <laughs> and that was the first time that I really realized how she was feeling. I really started to wonder about my biological family, realizing that this child that I was carrying was the only thing that I had that was genetically linked to me. I have not met any family that I'm biologically related to at all. It is Cougar Trivia, BYU's career leader in field goals made as a native of the state of Washington. Who is this person? He is Owen Potchman. Owen Potchman of Renton, Washington. Yeah, All right, there it is. Island. The Potchman brothers That's could kick guy. a little bit. You know, there was a while there where it was like Potchman brothers, Payne brothers. They just kept rolling them through. Yeah. There's, there's no other old droids out there to kick. I don't know. I yeah. Check. yeah. <laughs> Saturday, we are live with pregame coverage on BYU Radio, BYU Washington. It'll be 1.30 Eastern with Cougar Pregame Live. And an hour later, we get your BYU TV's countdown to kick off. The game will be seen on ABC or ESPN2, depending on where you live. You can hear it, of course, play-by-play -play on BYU Radio. Then postgame, we'll have the whole BYU TV radio crew bringing you coverage afterward. All right, uh, this four-game P5 stretch is actually four opportunities to beat a P5 team. It's, it's one at a time, and now that you're 2-1 and one, after three games uh, with a chance to go 3-1 and one against the P5s, from where you were after week one, what would 3-1 and one mean for this team and this program? I'm not really worried about the, the, the result or the outcome yet. I mean, we were getting better every week, and that's the trajectory we have to have is that learn as much as we can and, and love what we're doing. Uh, we've talked about it as, as a team because if, if not, you don't, you don't get to enjoy the, the moment, you know. And so um, our guys, I thought they they've played loose. They had fun. I mean, even when we went to overtime, it's like they've been there before, you know, and even at the Tennessee game. And so uh, just uh, I think the guys have a great approach to it, and uh, the leadership has taken over, and, and uh, they're getting better every week. But I just need to make sure that they, they continue on that trend. We have about 60 seconds left. I'm sure glad we had Kairos uh, back in here. Oh, he joined us last it. year. Really yeah. enjoyed having him then. He mentioned and about eating horse, and I think it came with some controversy <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> Only the bad horses. <laughs> <laughs> but clear, this is a guy that's always taking care of himself, putting himself yeah. in a good spot to have a lot of success uh, at school and as a, as a player. And loves his team, loves what he represents, his family, and loves the fans, and, and uh, he fits perfectly here at BYU. And like you said, there's no regrets for him. It's interesting how life... Uh, takes you on a path that for him to be with a great family, go on a mission, serve, and continues to serve as a BYU football player. He's a, he's a humble leader. I, I mean, there's leadership even if you're not rah-rah and out in everyone's face all the time. Yeah, he's not a big rah-rah guy, but he does it by example. And, and he's, I mean, but he's there for those guys. And sometimes being a leader means just listening to others and, and, uh, and hearing them out. Well, I'm glad we had him in. Glad you came in on the on on the uh, on the heels of another win. Let's keep this thing going. Yeah. More dances to do, and uh, next chance comes on Saturday. We got a lot of moves to practice, so yeah, let's just <laughs> looking forward to it. And then love the fans. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you guys on Saturday. All right. To join us here, go to byucougarscom slash Sitake Show. For the coach and for Scott Hill and Jerem Jordan, for Kyra's Tonga, my name is Greg Rubel. We'll see you next week. Go Cougs!